Hi everyone, uh, my name is Rocco Pacella and I'm the marketing manager for PitCon. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Um, so as an aside to the overall subject of this webinar, yet it's a very relevant and per pertinent support to it, uh, Jefferson mentioned, and I ask that you all please visit the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center. Uh, it's the ESRC as we like to abbreviate it, uh, which may be found at pitcon.org slash exhibitor. It's a site I know you're all familiar with. Uh, this is really where you can access everything from setup best practices uh, to ROI calculations to spending references. And I'll tell you that uh, as a marketing professional uh, in this trade show industry, I reference this page all the time, uh, both as a means to gain new insights and also as a means to refresh the information that I frequently forget about uh, shows that we attend and to PitCon itself. That uh, really helps get a perspective. Uh, from my angle of what exhibitors uh, go through, what motivates you, and what benefits you find at the shows that you attend. Um, as an, another aside, uh, we currently have only four booth spaces remaining on our exposition floor, and I see that some registered and attending this webinar today are not currently exhibitors, so please feel free to reach out to us here at PitCon. Uh, we will provide our email addresses, I believe, at the end of this webinar. Uh, you can ask us any questions you want. You can reserve your booth space with us. Please do so. We foresee those filling by the end of this week or maybe next week. Uh, so moving along, I'd like to introduce uh, our friend and longtime PitCon partner, Jefferson Davis, founder and co-owner of Competitive Edge. Uh, we rely on Jefferson so much uh, to not only share his expertise, but also his insight into the world of trade shows. Uh, for decades, uh, both here with PitCon and, and in the general trade show environment, uh, Jefferson's been providing show organizers and exhibitors alike with proven best practices that help you make exhibiting your exhibiting experience, excuse me, worthwhile and successful. Uh, and now I'll hand things off to our keynote speaker, Jefferson Davis. Thank you. All right, Rocco, thank you. Um, thank you, Stephanie, uh, sitting with us for Q&A, and also all of you exhibitors who have taken time out of your day to join me. We are super excited to get PitCon reopened and super excited that you're gonna be part of that. Uh, so we're sitting here today. It's about six weeks until we're gonna be wheels down in Philadelphia, and the doors are gonna swing wide open on PitCon. And some exhibitors are gonna have an incredible show. And some exhibitors are going to struggle. My money is on, it's you, the exhibitors who are on the, these webinars and using the content Rocco mentioned on the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center, as we mentioned, my money is on that you're gonna be the ones that walk out of the Pennsylvania Convention Center saying, what a difference a trade show can make in our business. And that's what we want for you, really. We want you to recognize the power of effectively exhibiting. And we wanna make sure that we're giving you the tools, the knowledge resources, the access to the scientific community, everything that you need to win. So I'm excited that you're here with me today. Uh, and let's go ahead and get this rolling. We got a lot to cover in a short period of time. So. It's like a countdown, right? It's like we're sitting here in a dragster and we're sitting on the drag strip and you know the lights are up there and the engines, you know, we've just turned on the engine, it's warmed up, and we're pressing on that accelerator and the lights are gonna count us down. So what I want to do is really play that theme and really talk about uh these major areas, countdown things that you can do one by one over these next six weeks to make sure that you are ready to win the PitCon race. So we're gonna to talk today how you can get in the mind and get on the agenda of the right attendees. You know, when most exhibitors struggle to get results from shows, the problem wasn't that there weren't enough of the right people at the show. The problem usually was there weren't enough of the right people at their booth. And that's a different distinction, and it's easily easy to generalize and go, well, geez, you know, there weren't enough people at that show. Well, yeah, no, there were probably more than enough 
of the right people at the show. But the question was, did they visit your booth? And the greater question was, what did you do in those weeks leading up to showtime to let people know that you're going to be there and give them a reason, right, to come see you? Okay, so we're going to talk about that today, number one. And, you know, this is really one of the biggest success factors for every exhibitor. Then number two, I want you to find a photograph, a rendering, a drawing, or if you have a small exhibit, a 10 by 10, I want you to set it up over these next few weeks. And I want you to stand off from it through the eyes of an attendee. And we're gonna look at two things. Does it grab attention, one, and two, does it quickly and visually answer the questions that are in the mind of an attendee? Uh, I have done over 70 panel discussions with trade show attendees, asking them why they attend, how they prepare, why they visit one booth and not another. And we've done almost 40,000 exhibit evaluations. Literally, me and my team combined have stood in front of about 40,000 booths, including at PitCon, and done a 21-point evaluation. So let's make sure that uh, your exhibit is fully optimized and it's gonna work for you and not against you when you're at the show. Then we're gonna talk about your in-booth product or service presentation or demonstration. This is the number one way that attendees want to interact with an exhibit is to some form of an interactive immersive, hands-on, minds-on product or service demonstration. So we're gonna give you some pointers today, show you some examples, and make sure that you are stepping back again and making sure that your presentation uh, is worthy of the attendee's time and it delivers value. Number four, you can do all this stuff right, but if you have booth staffers who are looking and acting like they don't wanna be there, if they're sitting in the back of the booth with a Starbucks in one hand and a cell phone in the other, it's all gonna fall apart. So we're gonna share some ideas today on how to get your booth staff ready for peak performance. And number five, if you're here for lead generation, business development, you're trying to get an economic return on your exhibiting investment, the real product of the show is going to be leads. So we're gonna help you sharpen the saw on this whole lead management process to capturing higher quality leads, uh, to improving the ultimate conversion of those leads to some form of the action by the visitor. So you've got about six weeks, you've got about five big rocks here that we're putting in, you know, logs we're putting in the fire, so to speak. And so what I'd like you to do is really carve out some time. I'd like you to carve out per week, a minimum of an hour and a half, but ideally up to three hours per week that you're gonna invest making sure that you check these five boxes. Because if you do these five things right, you're gonna win at PitCon. In fact, you're gonna win at any show you do. But if you neglect any one or any combination of these actions, your results are going to be limited. So let's make today about looking forward and then making sure that we're acting on what we hear today. Because it's to me, it's not so important that you go, oh, wow, that was a great presentation. So much great information. It's not what I care about. You and I care about, you find two or three or four practical ideas that make sense to you. And you get off this webinar and you get busy. You put them to work, right? You know, we've all heard the saying, right? Knowledge is power. Well, there's some truth to that. I, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it. I think knowledge intelligently applied toward a specific outcome, that's power, right? It's not that I know it. It's that I do it, right? So you, so, so you got to do it. So I, I, at the end of this, I'm going to ask you again in your workbook to write down the three most important actionable ideas you picked up here today that you're gonna actually do. And by the way, if you got questions along the way when you're implementing, you need help, you can reach me on the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center. Right on the home screen, there's a button that says, ask the expert. Type your question in and send it. 
right? Send it over to me. I'm here for you. Rocco's here for you. Stephanie's here for you. The whole team's here for you. We all want you to win. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Let's get this ready to roll and let's tackle this first major action. In the mind, on the agenda of enough for the right people. So it all starts with you stopping and asking yourself, who are the right people for you, right? And so what you wanna do is you wanna try to have a balanced approach where you're focusing on three, the triangle as I like to call it, the CPM triangle. You'll see that on your screen right now. The base of the triangle is your customers, people that you are now, or have done business with. And you should be compiling a list and you should be reaching out and inviting all of them to PitCon, whether you think they're coming or not. I don't know if you're aware of this, but one out of four attendees make their decision to go to a trade show, not from the producer's marketing, but from exhibitor invitations. Now, here's another thing. Today's customers are using trade shows to revalidate existing buying relationships. They're asking, are you still the best overall source of quality, price, value, innovation, service? You never want to go into a key trade show like PitCon without reaching out and inviting your customers, whether you think they're coming or not. Because I tell you, if you're not inviting them, I can tell you who is going to be inviting them is your competition, right? And, and so circle the wagons around your customers. Let them know you're going to be there. You can see on the screen, we got four different reasons to get them to the booth. Relationship management, you know, uh, make a deposit in the relationship account, right? Uh, inquire for additional opportunity, cross-sell, upsell, ears to the ground for change. Who's going, who's coming? What new projects, what new funding have they uh, received, right? What are they working on? and advocacy or endorsement. So what I want you to do is take each customer on your list, you know, and understand you have four different reasons for engaging with them at the show. Hey, and by the way, what a great time to hold customer meetings, right? Because what would it cost you to fly your team out to meet with one customer? Now you could have over the, during PitCom, 10, 20, 30, 40 customer meetings, all in the compressed time space save a, your company a ton of money and a ton of time. Now let's go to the right side of the triangle in green. These are talk to your sales or your business development team. If you sell through dealer distributors or partners, talk to them, ask them to put together a list of all prospects who are in your sales cycle. If you're already in dialogue with them talking about a specific project, Get them to the show. Let's use the energy and the excitement and your technical experts and your product demo, right? And everything going on to move them one step closer. Sometimes that one step closer is to the ultimate closure. This is the low hanging fruit. And this is where the fast exhibiting return on investment is hidden. And yet I'm amazed at how many business development and salespeople when you ask them, hey, are you going to pick on? I go, yeah. And I'm like, why are you going? Well, I got to go do my time in the booth. You know, no, that's not it. This is an incredible opportunity here. So let's use it to move our prospects through the sales process one step closer. And the third, the blue side of the triangle, new contacts. These are people and companies with the types of projects that are likely to be interested in you. but you have no meaningful engagement with them. So you're trying to put a face with a face, get a meeting of the minds and open the door. So what I want you to do then is start internally because you already have a lot of these lists, customers, prospects, suspects, uh, and let's get these people to our booth. Now, you gotta remember when people go to a trade show, they have over choice about where to invest their time and energy. And every choice they make is going to be a values-based choice. Meaning, do I get more value by visiting this booth or that booth? 
right? So it is our job as exhibitors to develop a irresistible value proposition. Here's why you should give us five minutes while you're at PitCon. So how do you find your value proposition? Well, think about what problems your customers are likely to be facing that you can help them solve. Think about what projects they might be working on that you can help them improve the process, right? Or get a, a better outcome. Think about opportunities, maybe things that you create that they may or may not be aware of that you can help them seize, right? So think about that. And then when you're defining your value proposition, you know, you want to be clear about here's what you'll see, here's what you can do in our booth. Here's what you'll learn, circle that word learn. They come to shows to learn. And here's what you'll get by visiting. And this will help you define like the value proposition, if you will. So once you find your voice on your value proposition, grab your pen because this is not in your workbook and it's not on the PowerPoint. I'm gonna give you the template for the value proposition. And once you find it, then you just communicate it through as many channels as you can. So here we go, ready? First is your headline or your hook. Struggling with, tired of, frustrated with, had enough of, problem. Here's another angle. Interested in, curious about, want to learn more about, insert your solution. So you can see your hook, your headline, can go from the problem and or the opportunity, or it can be both. Actually, if you're doing timed multi-step communication, a problem, an opportunity, a problem, an opportunity. You see, at the end of the day, uh, the biggest problem I've seen with the hundreds and hundreds of companies I've consulted and trained with, they're too close to what their physical products or services are, and they're too far from the problem they're solving or the opportunity they're creating. At the end of the day, right? It's not like they're really buying your product, they're buying some outcome. The clearer you are on your outcomes, now you have the ability to just dangle your problems, dangle your opportunities. Anybody who is grappling or wants either of those, they're gonna come to your booth, right? So your value proposition. So you gotta have your hook and it's best in the form of a question. Interested in, curious about, frustrated with, want, want to learn more about? Boom. Give us five minutes at PitCon, booth number one, two, three, four. You'll see, you'll do, you'll learn, and you'll get. Put us on your My Show Planner. Put us on your must see list. And that's the value prop right there. It's got the headline or the hook. Get the, the, give us five minutes at this booth. You'll see, you'll do, you'll learn, you'll get. And the call to action gets repeated twice. Put us on your My Show Planner, your agenda, your must-see exhibitor list. Then you just communicate that through as many channels as you can, right? And you're trying to land at least three direct touches, right? And it works best when you use multiple channels, right? If you have email addresses, you're doing email addresses, you can see how your value prop can go right in your subject line. Pitcon, colon, struggling with, interested in, curious about, want to learn more about. There's your subject line, right? Social media, you could be doing posts, videos, uh, direct mail, right? The clutter in the business mailbox has gotten so light, it's a great time for exhibitors to get back in there. If you got phone numbers, pick up the phone and call people. Have your uh, sales team call people. Hire rent a temp for $15 an hour to get on the phone and call your customers. Use voice broadcast, right? But what you want to do is try to land these three touches between now and showtime and space them out. So you might have your first touch at 30 days, your second touch at 15 days, and your third touch at five days before the show. 30. 15, five, and it will work best if you use multiple channels and not email, 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 or call, 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 right? So mix it up, okay? Next, um, 
PitCon. So PitCon has an incredible brand in the marketplace and they have different advertising and sponsorship programs. And we know it's only six weeks to go and a lot of the sponsorships and all that have taken. But I'm gonna bring Rocco back on for just a moment. And we're not here to sell you anything today, but we do just want you to be aware. Rocco, we're sitting here, Philadelphia's here six weeks. What are a couple of things at this point you think exhibitors might need to know about or pay attention to? Um, well, I think that, first of all, with regard to sponsorships, um, some of those sponsorships are sold out. Uh, we do have a lot of them that are open that we tried something different this year. Well, we tried it in 2022, but everyone knows, you know, we were battling uh, the pandemic then still. But so we kind of took this forward to 2023 for PitCon, and uh, we wanted to give people, uh, exhibitors, access to sponsorships that were available before, during, and after PitCon. Uh, usually shows focus a lot on the during, the in-show sponsorships. Those are still available. Uh, I will say those are on a deadline. We're closing them this Friday. However, uh, you can contact me directly, and I'll work my, way, my magic on the back end and get those hidden for you. But uh, we wanna give everyone access to telling people ahead of time, not only on your website, but directly to our attendees, directly even if you want to other exhibitors, because we know that a lot of B2B is conducted at PetCon uh, through our sponsorships. Those ones to me, the most valuable ones are the uh, attendee e-blast banners. Uh, that yeah. obviously is for attendees. We have a bad sponsorship still open. I know that's in show. Uh, we do have uh, someone that has sponsored an app sponsorship. This is a big one because this PitCon app, the LabSci app is new to this year. It's not an event app. It is an app that will exist year round. Uh, nice. However, in the event, we will be sending out push notifications. Uh, we are promoting this heavily to attendees in show. Uh, through various, you know, it's going to be on their badges to download that via QR code. That to me is the biggest one. And a push notification is something if you want it a week before PitCon and sponsorships are closed, you call me, I can get it in there. Uh, and also there's the benefit after PitCon, which I won't focus on too much, but that's just follow through. Uh, sending uh, an email to our attendees through our e-blast, uh, it looks like you have a little article in there a clickable article with a call to action button. Uh, we found a lot of people have a lot of benefit from that. Why? Because we do that with other shows that we attend. These are the sponsorships that we find value in. These are the sponsorships that we want to offer to you. So again, they close on Friday. I'll say at 11.59 p.m. on Friday, sponsorships will close. You go into your exhibitor portal, you get those. If you're too late or if you're waiting to hear back from your accounting staff on if you can spend a little bit more on a sponsorship, um, I'll open it up for you. Uh, I can go in on the back end of the exhibitor portal and really get those to you because again, you're looking for the best return on investment. A sponsorship, PitCon sponsorships, I know are not as expensive as other show sponsorships. We wanna give you the best return here. Uh, we wanna give you direct access to those attendees. And uh, like I said, we'll keep it open for you. Uh, just please let me know. Okay, thanks Rocco. So here's the big takeaway uh, to everybody listening today. If you have not visited these two URLs on the screen, uh, the Promote Your Booth Marketing Resources, put that down as an action item like after the webinar today and take a look at what's still available. Think about your budget, think about what your goals are and um, see what makes sense for you. Um, it's so important to do everything you can do to promote. When exhibitors struggle at shows, it usually comes down to they didn't get enough traffic to their booth. And that's what we're really trying to make you aware of here that uh, you gotta do your part here. You, you don't wanna do what I call exhibit by hope. Rent space, show up and hope, right? Cause hope is not really a strategy. Um, every now and then you'll win on the hope plan, but not consistently. Right. So make sure you take a look at that. Um, make sure that as much as possible, I mentioned it earlier, having your call to action um, twice in your value prop. You know, uh, give us five minutes at booth number, put us on your must see show calendar. 
Your call to action is critical. I'm amazed at how many marketing pieces, emails and things that I direct mail pieces and uh, social media posts, um, and there's no call to action. Maybe your call to action is you're gonna set up a landing page, an event specific landing page, that when they click, it goes to the page and it gives a deeper dive and they can set appointments through there. You could integrate a tool like Calendly into it. And calendaring, this is the highest, this is the holy grail of exhibiting right here. By calendaring, I mean that the meeting is, is on their calendar and it's on yours. And if you haven't, or you, you're not familiar with this incredible tool called Calendly, it's amazing. I tell you, over the last three or four years, it has completely revolutionized my business in terms of how fast and easy it is to get appointments. So you could have each one of your booth staff set up a PitCon event schedule with 15 minute blocks with one link. You could have this going back and forth between your customers, your prospects, your new contacts, and you could walk into the show with a dance card full of high value meetings. So calendaring key. And also be sure to look into the mobile app and look at the interactivity and see if there's a like add this company to my um, exhibitor list. A lot of the mobile apps will have a little thing where the attendee can click and add your company name. Then when they're at the show, they get notifications to come visit your booth. So uh, calendaring, okay? And, you know, I don't want people at my booth because of I, I have tchotchkes and stuff like that. But I have found that if you deliver a good value proposition to the right people and you offer some form of, a, oh, by the way, is our way of saying thanks, that the response rate will go up high. So let's talk for a moment here about how to use rewards, promotional products. Some people call them tchotchkes, right? Giveaways, whatever, right? So let me give you some good guidance in this area. So number one, what really makes a, what makes a good reward? Well, it should be unique. You don't want to give away the same thing everybody else is, right? It should be useful. On top of the desk is better than in the drawer. In the uh, lab coat or the jacket is better than in the drawer. So it's useful if it's something they can use, right? And kind of carry uh, with them, uh, you know, day to day, very powerful. Make it quality. You don't want to give away cheap stuff, right? Because they'll link that with your brand. If you can tie your giveaway into a theme or a message, that'll raise the effectiveness. For example, uh, I was exhibiting uh, right before the pandemic and I had a um, this whole theme that I was executing. Success is measured by the companies you keep. How do you measure up? My giveaway was a tape measure with a calculator. Now, I didn't just do that for any reason. It tied into what? Success, measurement, the calculator, I would hand them the calculator, ask them two questions, and they would calculate the potential revenue value of what I was talking about. So if you can support a message or a theme, right? Very powerful. And if you have the ability to personalize the giveaway. Now, you wouldn't wanna do this to everybody. You might wanna take your list and identify your top 50 people that if you only saw these people at the show, right? Uh, and then you send them a letter of invitation with a request for appointment. Now, how do you deliver re rewards? You know, a lot of people use contests, but to me, that's the least effective. Why? Usually only one person wins, and two, does anybody really win, right? Who knows? Nobody knows, right? And contests, a lot of exhibitors, if they don't give any thought, they'll kind of go to the con. Now, if you have nothing else, maybe, right? Free gift at booth, great strategy. Hey, give us five minutes. You'll see, you'll do, you'll learn, and you'll get. Tell them what they're gonna get. You wanna put a little bit of wood, wood in the stove before you light the fire? Send it up front, right? Hey, is our way of saying thanks for stopping by. Here you go. Makes them feel like, oh, I'm going to pick on. Oh man, I gotta I got at least stop by and say thanks, right? Um, my favorite, number four. 
send them half of something, the other halves at the booth. And I'll give you an example in a moment here. So let me kind of go over some of the hot things. Gift cards are smoking hot, right? Amazon gift card, Starbucks gift card, Visa gift card. You don't want to give away a lot, you know? I mean, if it's a Starbucks card, $5 is probably enough, right? You know, if it's an Amazon card, maybe it's 25. Think about what the potential revenue value of a customer is for you and think about what would be a reasonable gift card value that doesn't feel like a bribe, right? We're not doing that. We're not trying to buy the business here, right? But we're just trying to say, hey, as our way of saying thanks. You know, $25 is a decent amount. Uh, so maybe it's going to be in that right now. Are you going to give that to everybody? No, right? You're going to do targeted marketing and say, hey, uh, you know, schedule a meeting with us, show up for the meeting. We got a gift card waiting for you. Uh, useful. Remember I said useful? Here's an example. You know, everybody's carrying smartphones today and not that many people are carrying uh, chargers or batteries with them, especially when they're on the show floor. Hey, what if you're the one that's showing up and giving them this universal charger? Their phone is at 1% after when they visit your booth and you're the one that saves their phone telling you you're going to make a, a great brand impression wearables are hot right wearables i have seen companies that have uh put on like the um steps challenge like how many steps can you take per day and they've given their visitors pedometers and they've asked them to come back at the end of each day and log in their numbers and whoever has the highest number of steps by the end of the show wins something so wearables can be really hot, really fun, and also drive them to your booth multiple times. Remember I said personalized? So when I'm targeting like C-level executives, this is my go-to strategy. I will order a personalized pen and pencil set, brass logo, my, my logo on the top. I will have the person's name engraved on the pen and the pencil cost me about $50 to do this. Then I will FedEx or priority mail a letter of invitation with a request for appointment, right? And then I'll say, pencil us in for five minutes while you're at PitCon. Oh, by the way, your, your pen is at the booth. I've had as high as a 75% response by using this type of a strategy. Three out of four, the people I targeted visited my booth. And you know what I do with the people who didn't visit the booth? I give the pen to the uh, territory rep or dealer and ask them, hey, go out when you get a chance, give them a call and go deliver the pen, right? <laughs> so remember, it's gonna come down to building your list, having a good mix in your list. It's gonna come down to developing a real strong value proposition. It's gonna be a real clear, easy to do call to action and a reward for responding right and if you do those things you are on your way now let's pivot over time is getting away from me like it always does let's talk about your booth here okay um, i want you to get out a drawing a photograph a rendering or set up your small booth over the next week or two here's your first job it's got to grab attention you know we think just because we put our booth out on the floor that everybody that passes it sees it newsflash they don't there's no way they can process or see every booth on the show floor and they don't so the first thing your booth has to do is it's got to cut through the visual clutter and it's got to grab eyeballs here are the keys to doing it color lighting check out the color and the lighting on this booth it's a fabric booth this is a visual stunner so how are you using color and lighting in your booth imagery a picture is worth a thousand words how are you using imagery materials the physical materials notice that booth on the right is a fabric booth it's all it is is fabric with great lighting okay uh flooring check out this small booth here look how they use their flooring and it kind of matched in it flooring can really make a, your booth stand out even a small booth all right so your flooring uh unique shapes or angles look at the exhibitus booth in the center Look how their wall is angled and their company branding is suspended almost like 3D in the air, okay? Uh, and motion, you know, as human beings, we're very sensitive to anything moving near us. So I want you to grab your booth and ask yourself, 
what about it is making it grab attention and what can we add that will make it maybe you're going to put in a, a large flat panel uh, maybe you're going to put in one of those led fans that creates a hologram you can do graphic design put a usb and have holograms floating in your booth but do something okay make sure your booth gets seen okay next now once they look at a booth they're going to fire questions in their mind they're, they're automatically going to ask uh, themselves unconsciously, what do you do? Why should I care? And who are you? Okay, let me really emphasize on this what? Captain Obvious. Do not make people stand there and try to figure out what you do. They're not going to do it. It's not going to happen at a show, not at PitCon or not at any show. You got to make it crystal clear what you do. And the second one, this is the one where most exhibitors struggle. Why should I care? Right? And this is the problem you solve, the benefits you offer. And the finally, notice where the who falls here. Third, it's what, why, and who. So again, I want you to stand up from your booth and ask, does it answer the question? So here's an example. Look at this. Plasma bionics. Oh, that's who they are. What do they do? They do air plasma sterilization. Got it. Why should I care? It sterilizes critical instruments, it's safe and easy to operate, and it reduces operating costs. That's a clinic on a small booth right there on how to answer the three questions in the mind of the booth. Now, notice they have their call to action too. Your eyes get pointed right to their device, and you've got a pre order with a URL right there. Here's another example. Okay, I was just at the World of Concrete in Las Vegas. So, everybody's familiar with rebar. It's the, that iron bars that they put in the concrete. So this gator bar apparently is lighter and stronger. Why should I care? It's lighter and stronger. That is a unique selling proposition, right? What makes this different than rebar? Lighter and stronger. Here's an example of a client, of a exhibitor who really used these large oversized, almost like billboards around the booth. And they, and they kind of use some humor and a play on words, uh, chasing down timesheets, giving you sheet fits. They really understand their customers' pain points, and they've illustrated them with a relevant image and a question. Uh, timesheet dispute, uh, time sheet disputes have you up Sheet Creek, <laughs> right? A play on words, but man, they really understand their customers' pain points, and they dangle them all around the booth. So here's your next assignment. Stand up from your booth and ask yourself, does it quickly and visually answer the what we do, why you should care, and who are you questions? If you combine a visual attention grabbing power with quick visual communication, you have an optimized booth, okay? And that's what I want for you. All right, let's talk about your uh, AV, your flat panel. How many of you, by the way, on this webinar, could you go to your question or your uh, chat tab right now and and give me a yes or even just raise your hand i'm going to take a look uh on on the console do you currently use flat panels in your booth yes or no go to your question and send me a yes or a no or go to your chat or raise your hand on the attendee list let me take a look at that okay it looks like uh we do have people jan katie thank you very much uh let's see who else Cody, um, Nick, using flat. Hey, flat panels, I think, should be a part of every booth and even a small 10 by 10. But here's what we've observed with almost 40,000 evaluations. Most exhibitors really do not do a good job of leveraging the flat panel. Sometimes it's not even turned on. There's a blank screen. Other times they have software and all you see is this screenshot of the software page. You have no idea what it is. Many exhibitors run short movies but they're silent there's no audio uh there's no captions right uh sometimes they're too long and, and really there's just nothing about it that is grabbing attention so here's a real world example i was at the vmx veterinary expo in the early part of january this year this small exhibitor they actually had a decent booth a backlit right it's a law firm and they had somewhat of a platitude, right? It said, surround yourself with the right legal team. Well, you know, what does that really mean to me? I don't know. What are you saying? I have the wrong team? I don't know. So it's not a great 
hook or headline. But what I did now, when I walked up to their booth, see where it says enter into a lease in yellow and black? They had like their logo and they had reams of copy that nobody was reading. So I asked these gentlemen, I said, um, okay, we're at the veterinary show. What situ hey, write this question down, by the way. Everybody write this down. What situations would prompt your ideal visitor to think about what you do? Now, these guys do legal services. So look how they did it in yellow and black. Entering into a lease, selling your practice, buying a practice, you got questions about. So they jumped on their little notebook there, opened up PowerPoint, created a screensaver, and had this up and running, and it was rotating between screens about every 20 to 30 seconds. On day one, they didn't get much traffic at their booth. On day two, when I evaluated in the morning and they changed the flat panel, I went back at the end of the day, he said his booth was busy all day long, wire to wire. So if you're using flat panels, let's, let's use them to call out our target visitor. If you're not using a flat panel in your booth, I would encourage you to do so. Does it add a little bit of uh, investment to the booth? Yes. Can it make all the difference in the world? It can make all the difference in the world, okay? So let's move on. Now, let's talk about your demonstration presentation. I'm, I'm gonna use the phrase value-based experience, right? Because like I said earlier, where the value is clear, the decision is easy. And it's your job to clarify and communicate why out of three, four, 500 booths, I should stop at yours, right? So the number one way, I said this a moment ago, the Center for Exhibition Industry Research, the number one way attendees wanna interact is through some form of a presentation or demonstration, okay? So they come to shows to learn. You are the subject matter expert in your product or service. So here's a great question to gather your team and talk about. What could you quickly teach them that's going to add value to their job, their project, their process, their career, their business, right? Teach, right? If you dangle learning, they'll come running, okay? So what can you teach them? Now, when you put together your presentation demonstration, it, it would be wise to follow the advice of Confucius. Confucius said, I hear and I think. I see and I remember, I do and I know. So let's make sure our pr presentation is immersive and multi-sensory. And let's also give them the opportunity to talk about what we just shared with that. So let me show you a clinic on a small booth. This is an absolute clinic. It's one of my favorite booths over these 40,000 evaluations we've done. The Dyson Airblade. This was at ISSA, a Jan San show, jan janitorial sanitary type show, you know, clean buildings essentially. So look at this booth here, it's a 10 by 20. Notice it's wide open, it's easy to enter. Notice what is on right on the aisle, a sink bowl with four air blades running. Come up, wash your hand, whoosh, dry your hands. Wow, wanna talk about proving your claim? Now it, now it gets even better than that, right? Look what's going on on the back wall in this booth. Start on the left. You see the cutout view of the air blade? They're speaking to the technical influencer. It's got a video, it's got a cutout view, and it's got some copy. Notice the center panel. They're speaking to the economic influencer. It's showing on average how much facilities pay for paper towels, $1,460. Those loud, noisy hair dryers, the, the annual electric cost, 127 each. The, the Dyson Airblade, $34. Wow, talk about story time. Now, we're not done. Look to the right of the, um, the, the demo station. Look at the cutout view on the waste basket. Eliminate waste, showing paper towels all the way up to the ceiling. They're speaking to the sustainability, the green influencer, right? This is a clinic on how to bring it all together, multi-sensory, hear it, see it, do it, talk about it, right? 
make sure you have that visual support. This is one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is they have a product or a service and they're maybe showing, telling, demo, but they do not have visual support of their messaging. If I hear it, I'll remember 10%. If I hear it and see it, I'll remember 40 to 50%. If I hear it, see it and do it, I'll remember 70 to 90% of what I heard, right? That's what we're going for. Okay, so make sure you have visual support like they do here and then promote your demonstration before because, hey, that's what they want to see in your booth. So make sure you integrate that into your booth. We're going to have a three-minute demonstration that's going to show you how to do A, B, and C. And oh, by the way, by participating in a demo, we got something cool for you at the booth here, okay? Next, let me give you a few ideas on, now it's outside of your industry, but don't get caught up in the product. Get caught up in how they brought their story to life. Okay. So this company manufactures water soluble labels. They are targeting the food service industry. You know, companies have to put like masking tape with pens about the products, uh, the dates, right? How old is this food essentially? Uh, and it creates all kinds of problems like it uh, getting the tape and the stickiness off, it creates contamination problems. So they wanted to really demonstrate how their labels dissolve in 30 seconds or less. They created the Dissolve Away Derby. Isn't this brilliant? I, I mean, who doesn't want to have fun nowadays, right? Like everybody, we're tired of all the, so serious, right? Uh, shoot the gun, watch the label dissolve, win a prize. Can you think of a better way to bring that story to life that is fast, fun, novel, and proves their claim? Here's another example. These, this was from the National Restaurant Show. So this company manufactures glassware. What do you think is one of the biggest problems that restaurants have with glassware? Breakage, right? Not only is it dangerous, safety issues, but it's costly. So they, have, they wanted to demonstrate how durable their glassware is. So they rigged up these five glasses on a device and the end one on the left, the attendee could pick that up and pull it back and let it drop. And it would make a noise. It'd make that loud clink, 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 clink. And the glass wouldn't break. Wow. Talk about proving your claim, right? Talk about doing it in a fast, fun, novel way that is going to be memorable. And by the way, when attendees near the booth heard the clink, 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 you can imagine how many eyeballs hit their booth. So how are you staging, showing, telling, presenting your product services? How can you make it more engaging? How can you make it more fun? How can you make it more memorable? How can you prove your claims, right? That's what we're talking about here. Okay, I've hit you with a lot here. Uh, we've still got about eight minutes to go. Uh, so let me um, keep on rolling here. Uh, let's talk about your people here, okay? I, you know, I said it early, you can do all that stuff right, but I'm telling you, if you got the wrong people in the booth, it's all gonna fall apart. So when you're deciding who's going to work my booth, Let's make sure they line up on these attributes. They like working shows. You know, they've got somewhat of an outgoing personality. They're proactive. They're not gonna sit back there and wait for everybody to come to them. They're knowledgeable. They know your company. They know your products. They know the customer needs. They know the competition. They have the ability to ask questions and listen. They have the ability to deliver your messaging concise and persuasively. And they take good lead information and they get the visitor to collaborate and commit to a clear next step. Okay, so some quick hitters on getting them ready. Number one, have enough 50 square feet per staffer is a rule of thumb. If you're in a 10 by 10 booth and you have one staffer, what happens if another visitor walks up, right? You're in trouble. Make sure you got at least two, right? Make sure that somebody's in your booth and available during all open hours. Don't come late and leave early. You know, try not to have your booth empty because, you, you know, it might be the moment no one's in your booth is the moment the most powerful attendee in the entire show walks up. Half of the battle of staying toe-to-toe -to, -toe to talking to people is just look like you want to. Stand up, open your body posture, put a smile on your face, and greet people. I'm telling you, if you only do that, guess what you're going to force them to do? Process your booth. They're going to look at your booth and they're going to ask, what do you do? Why should I care? Who are you, right? Uh, when people walk into your booth, uh, right, greet them like you're glad to see them. Hi, how you doing? 
verbally welcome them. Hey, welcome to Competitive Edge. Meet the person. Do not read their name off the badge. Ask, say, hey, I'm Jefferson and you are. And ask a discovery question. Hey, what brings you by? I noticed you were looking at our equipment over here. Tell me about your interest. And that's what you do when people come into the booth. Ask your good questions. You know, what's prompting their interest? What do they do? What project problem pain points do they have? You know, what would they like to learn about your product services while they're here, right? Remember, deliver it concisely, persuasively, one point at a time. You know, you told me that you were struggling with this. One of the things you're gonna love about our solution is this, right? Uh, make sure there's interest before you swipe a badge. A lot of people will say, hey, I got 50 leads today. No, I got 50 scans or swipes, right? That's why we don't go for the badge too early. And always talk with the visitor. What do you think our next step should be? How can we help you learn more to see if this is a good fit for you, right? And get the visitor to collaborate on what happens next, okay? Uh, let's talk about uh, getting more. Um, when you're awake, you're working. That's my philosophy at a show, right? So tell your booth staff, let's take advantage of the full event. Let's get at these social events, these networking events, the PitCon party. Be where the attendees are, right? Remember, this is the place where you meet people you probably didn't know. And at the end of the day, people are going to do business with people they know, like, and trust, right? So here's some quick hitters for getting more from social events. I'm not going to go over all these. I'll hit some high points. Um, if it's your event, please tell your staff to be a host, not a guest, right? Uh, every event you go to, make sure you bring business cards, a pen, and a small notepad with you. I like to get there early and scout the venue. It kind of gives me conversation starters, right? I always, number five, I always set a goal to interact with, you know, if it's a one-hour event, I'm going to try to have at least six interactions over that one hour. And that's 10 minute and interaction. I'm going to move around the event. Watch for people that are standing alone. I mean, no one wants to be standing alone. Sometimes they're new to the show, right? You can go up and meet them and you never know who you're going to meet, right? Ask questions about them. Don't just come in, you know, like a bull in a china shop talking about what you do. Hey, uh, what brought you to PitCon? What do you do? Uh, what got you into this? What do you like most about it? You know, uh, what's been the biggest thing that surprised you about having a career in this or that, right? Really good. Get them talking about themselves because you know what they'll do then? They'll flip it to you and they'll ask you, and what do you do? And you really want to come up with a compelling way to answer that. The way I do it is, um, you know today how, write that down, by the way, you know today how, and, and here goes my how, how exhibitors spend a lot of money on shows and sometimes don't get a lot back. And they go, yeah, right? <laughs> Boom. What I do is help them turn it around from an expensive appearance to a profitable investment. A really compelling. You know how you know you nailed your ele your elevator pitch, they call this? Your, is when they go, how do you do that? You nailed it. And you got to have your exit. Here's my favorite exit when I'm at a social event. Hey, Rocco, I've really enjoyed talking with you. I don't want to dominate your time, but I would like to continue the conversation. Let's swap cards and uh, drop by our booth tomorrow. I appreciate your time. On to next. Okay? Getting more. Okay, final piece here. Leads. Can't say it better than this. If ROI is the name of your game, lead management is the playbook, right? When I say what makes a quality lead, it's information rich, more than what's embedded in the badge, and the visitor has discussed and agreed to take some visible next action. I'm telling you, if you give me 50 of those, I'm gonna convert 15 to 30 of those to business. If you give me 500, drop your card in a fishbowl to win this or that, I'll be lucky to convert one, right? So the first step in improving your lead quality is to ask what information beyond name, job title, company, mailing address, what information do I need to capture to qualify a lead? And by the way, ask your sales team, ask your dealers, ask your distributors, and then Orchestrate your question flow in natural flow of conversation. The front end questions are about the visitor, their job, their, their project, their process, their problems, their pain points. The back end questions are what I'd call the harder qualifiers, right? 
Um, I really believe you should be using the electronic lead capture system if you don't have one on your own. One of the worst mistakes you can make is have a visitor come into your booth and hand you their badge to scan and you can't scan it. You've got to pause here and ask yourself, what impression am I making on that visitor? And their brain might be going, huh, seems like everybody else can, wonder why these gals can't answer cards, right? Can't scan my card, not a good impression. Train your booth staff on guiding the conversation with questions and using the lead capture device. I like to set lead goals. You know, I will break it down. Typically one lead per hour per staffer, and I will hold my staff accountable for those goals. We will have a brief end of shift or an end of day quick lead review meeting in the booth before we break, right? And I like to reward and recognize the, my top performers in my booth, the people that are playing all out and in it to win it, right? Maybe it is just, you know, a, 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 hey, here's our MVP of the show today. Sometimes we'll send flowers home to their significant other without telling them. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Sometimes we'll give them like tickets to an, a show or an event going on. Maybe it's a Visa gift, gift card, an Amazon gift card, whatever. Okay, I have covered so much here today, and yet I feel like we've just cracked the code here. Today is a beginning, not an end. As Rocco mentioned earlier on, uh, the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center, we've got webinars, articles, downloadable tools, planning X, and there's your ask button right there. At any time during your trade show journey for free, no sales pitch. You got questions, type in your email, type your question, bang that submit now button, and that'll come right to me, and I'll respond quickly, usually within 24 hours, rarely past 24 hours. All right, uh, countdown. Okay, the rest of the month here, these are the areas that you should be focusing on. These are the content on the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center that address these areas in February, the rest of this month. And then in March, February and March, here's what you want to be focusing on, these five areas. And here's the download, the watch, the read, and the ask. Okay, there's over $10,000 of proven effective content there. It's all free. And it's all brought to you by PitCon. Why? Because they want you to win. Exhibiting is not easy. It takes work, but it's also not hard to win. If you are doing the right things, what you can get from PitCon will blow your mind. And that's what I want. That's what Rocco wants. Stephanie wants the entire team at PitCon. So with that, I'm going to toss it back to Rocco for any additional thoughts or closing ideas. I'm going to take a look in the question queue and see what we have there. Thanks, Jefferson. Oh. Um, we got a question? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, actually we do. We got one in the queue. Um, the question was, uh, does the mobile app for the show, do exhibitors have the ability or attendees have the ability to communicate with exhibitors through the mobile app? Um, I will, whomever asked that, I will give you my email address because that is something that I will need to talk to our app technical team about. Uh, I know that the app has the ability to do that. Um, I want to say that that is being set up right now, but they are more familiar with that, those workings than I am right now, uh, as that again is being finalized at this very moment we are looking to put that out very very soon so my email address is p as in paul a c e l l a at pitcon.org that's pachella at pitcon.org uh, if you want to email me directly i will connect you uh to our technical team here and we'll be able to answer that question for you i know that the future of the app there is a method for doing that and the future of the app is really designed to be more of a community uh, that is a year-round uh, experience not just as i said before an event app it is meant to last the entire year driven by content driven by community uh, and therefore that will be there i will see if this first uh, phase of the app includes that for you Okay, thanks, Rocco. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, the next question was, um, um, does PitCon make, like, can we acquire 
mailing lists of of pre-registered attendees is that available we do not sell our lists we are a nonprofit. we do not sell our lists however you are able to through our exhibiting or excuse me our registration company which is named merits um you are able as an exhibitor to purchase e-blasts to lists again we can't sell those names uh we're yeah. we're, we're we're a nonprofit. We're, we're not permitted through that and partially our own ethical. Uh, we don't sell those names, but you okay. can contact those people directly. And when you do that through merits, you can contact them based on qualifications that they've set out in registration. For instance, if you just want to contact spectroscopists, if you just want to contact chromatographers, if you only want to contact people in the food science realm, you can do that through our registration company. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so you're saying that they can do e-blasts to targeted segments of the yeah. uh, pre-registered. You know, the great. I don't know. We can we can ask them if they have the ability to do mail. However, I know that e-blasts you get the open rate, the click-through rate. You know, with mail, I know it's a little bit. <laughs> You know, it's a it's a little bit different tracking mail pieces as we right. all know. It. And, you know, so uh, yeah. the e blasts uh, frequently have a lot more analytics on the on the back end of that. Um, so yeah, you can certainly do that. Uh, that is done through the exhibitor portal, I believe. Uh, if you are the booth manager, you can log into there. You can access that information. You can set that up how much you would like to go uh, through, how what what groups you'd like to hit with that. Uh, it's it's something that a lot of exhibitors use uh, picked on. Yeah, and one of the things I mentioned it earlier, um, you know, if you're doing any form of digital marketing for the show, be it social media, be it email, it's a really good idea for exhibitors to set up a event landing page. They're fast, they're inexpensive to set up. Uh, you know, you could list, you know, everyone that's going to be in the booth, you could get your calendaring in there, you could offer some form of a technical or a white paper as a result of visiting and you can capture information. So I would look into that. Uh, landing pages, I think, are one of the most powerful um, uh, show marketing tools that, strangely enough, very few exhibitors are using. So uh, if you want to stand out from the crowd, look into setting up an event specific landing page. So that is all I'm seeing for questions, Rocco. We have run a few minutes over here. Rocco, I want to thank you, Stephanie, and the management team at PitCon for caring enough about your exhibitors to really invest resources in the, this ongoing training and support. And I want to thank all of you for logging in here today. Um, remember, it's not what you heard that's going to make a difference. It's really going to come down to what you do. And this presentation was recorded and you will be able to view the presentation in its entirety or just drag to whatever section and access the slide deck by um, going to the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center. So have a great rest of the week. Find your three to five action items. Use these next six weeks to not just show up, but show out, right? Go get it. Have a great show. We will see you in Philadelphia uh, in the week of March 20th. Have a great rest of the day, everybody. Hopefully, I'll see you on the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center, too. Thanks for logging in. Thank you.